It was the summer of 1949. Young geologist Vadim Kolpakov was on a mission to northern Russia in the Irkutsk region. His job was to draw a geological map of the area. While on duty, he came across something so mysterious and remarkable, it continued to puzzle experts decades later. Ooh, what could it be? It was the middle of August. Kolpakov, though tired from all the walking, reached the area he needed to map. There, he met the local Yakut people, who warned him about a bad place hidden in the woods. Though now it's more famous as the Potomsky Crater, locals had dubbed it Fire Eagle Nest, probably because it looks like a giant bird nest sitting on a hill. And I mean giant. It rises 130 feet in the air, half as tall as a giant sequoia. The cone-like structure's base has a diameter of 320 feet, almost as wide as the Seattle Space Needle is tall. But what was hiding inside would be the most surprising and baffling discovery. Well, if you could get close enough to uncover its secrets. According to the Yakut people, even wild animals are scared to go near it. Locals had all sorts of theories about this earthly mystery. They said that people fell ill around it, and some of them even went missing, never to be found. When the young geologist heard about the possible dangers, he wasn't scared at all. He became even more curious about what's going on in that crater. So he decided to approach it, get a closer look and find out. He thought that, as an expert, he might be able to give a simple explanation. If only it were that easy. He began walking towards it slowly, while also observing the nature around it. He looked at some of the half-broken trees the soil, and the plants. At first, he thought it might be an archaeological artifact. But the ancient locals didn't have the engineering technology the Egyptians or Romans had back then to build something so big. Could it be the work of another ancient civilization, though? From far away, it looked like a giant bird nest indeed. The closer he got, the bigger it became. That was when he realized it couldn't have been built by humans. There was nothing that resembled any ancient architecture he could connect it to. Maybe it was a volcano. A plausible theory, but there haven't been any around that location for millions of years. Plus, the crater appeared to be fresh. It was also deserted. Trees didn't grow on the slopes of this natural structure, and the winds didn't carry enough soil to make plant growth possible. Are the Yakut people correct? Do animals avoid it too? He climbed all the way to the top and discovered something unbelievable. It was so hot that he felt the sweat running down his forehead. It was as if he was close to a fire source. When he looked down, he was met with a perfectly circular mound in the middle. Another mystery, he thought to himself. The round hump in the center of the crater was around 40 feet tall the height of your standard telephone pole. Such things don't appear in volcanoes, even in extinct ones, and there aren't any around here that link to this particular mount. Without being able to solve the strange appearance of the bad place, Kolpakov went back home and told everyone about his discovery. What was once a local anomaly would soon become a worldwide mystery. After a while, the crater was named the most mysterious place in Russia for many reasons. Trees didn't grow on or around the structure, and they also found that radiation levels were very high. But I'm getting ahead of myself, and I sure don't want to do that. His discovery sparked an interest in the scientific community, and people started digging and coming up with theories. A lot of experts agreed that this must have been the work of a meteorite. They believed that the space rock entered the Earth's atmosphere at incredible speeds, but had been slowed down quite a bit by the time it struck the surface. But it still hit hard enough to form the infamous crater. As the years went on, without a definite answer to what happened, almost everyone agreed that this must be the case. But later, other scientists came to add their own alternate theories. One of them was geologist Alexander Portnoff. He believed that the crater was the result of a space rock slicing off the famous Tunguska meteoroid, which exploded over Krasnoyarsk, the third largest city in Siberia, in the summer of 1908. But get this, the meteorite that should have struck the Earth was never found. 
The accepted theory is that it disintegrated a few miles in the air before it made contact. Those two theories inspired many expeditions to the mysterious site. Visiting scientists took samples of the soil and surrounding plants. Would lab tests prove that this thing had cosmic origins? Hard to say, because their efforts ended up being fruitless. So the research continued and only grew as the story began making headlines. In 2006, Dr. Alexander Dmitriev from the Irkutsk State Technical University found a puzzling magnetic anomaly in the area. He thought that there could be iron or some other metal a few hundred feet below the surface. So another expert joined the project. It was Dr. Igor Simonov from the Moscow Institute for Problems in Mechanics. He ran some tests to see if a meteorite impact could create this double mound structure. Sometime later, he came out with his findings. The crater was likely formed by a falling, somewhat spherical object made from a dense material that could only exist in space. When the paper covering this theory came out, some experts did more experiments to see if it was possible. They found that it wasn't just one object falling from space, but two, traveling over 14,000 miles per hour. When the first meteorite hit the Earth, it exploded and formed the crater. Then the second object followed, but it was slowed down by the first impact and sunk deep into the ground. Yet again, there were problems with that theory too. Many astrophysicists objected, claiming that meteorites can't fly one after the other and hit the planet in the exact same spot. With so many questions still unanswered, more and more experts came to the Siberian location to take a shot at solving the mystery. One of them started collecting wood samples to determine the age of the trees in the area and compared them to small samples taken on the slope itself. In the end, they finally had a breakthrough. They found that the crater likely appeared about 300 years ago. When? Check. How? Still a mystery. They came across another secret while studying the trees. By counting the rings in a tree's trunk, scientists can find not only how old they are, but also any abnormalities in that time. With this experiment, they noticed that the vegetation grew way faster than usual in this spot. After ruling out other growth-boosting factors like better soil content and more sunshine for some period of time, the only guess they were left with was… radiation. Yes, the experts knew that when exposed to high doses of radiation, trees and plants grow faster. But the radiation levels on and around the crater were low. At some point in the last 300 years or so, there must have been radioactive material in the area. Their way to check was to examine the trees even further for elements that show that. And bingo! They found high levels of uranium and strontium in the trunks. But those elements had decayed in the last 20 years, hence why initial readings on the crater itself weren't too high. The next step was to finally unveil the mystery of what this thing is. They turned their attention to the assumption Kolpakov had made when he first explored the fire eagle nest. What if this thing is a volcano that, instead of lava, spews out gas? And do you think that was the answer they had been looking for? You should know by now that there was a problem with this theory too. The gases most volcanoes put out aren't dangerously radioactive. So that couldn't explain the radiation in the trees. That, and it hadn't erupted in recent years to analyze its gas. Though a gas eruption could explain how the thing rose from the underground. And a second eruption could be what caused that mound to spring up in the center. Yet the mystery remains to this day. Why were the trees radioactive at some point? Why is there high magnetism in the area? If a space rock hit the Earth, where did it go? And if it wasn't a meteorite, then what gave birth to this enigmatic mound jutting out of the isolated Siberian forest? Expeditions continue to this day in search of answers.